Hi friends, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my new house. You will be seeing some content flipping back and forth between my old place and my new house. I'm a homeowner now. Um, the wackiness of house hunting, the legal transfer of a property took up so much time. I feel like I'm out of practice and I haven't done really anything normal in quite a while. So why not start today with a reading wrap up? The things that I have read since the July reading wrap up, I think. So let's have a look at the reading journal here. So the last thing I talked about, oh, it was my August, my August wrap up. I think the last thing was I Was Born For This by Alice Oseman. So I finished that on August 12th. And then the next thing that I finished after that in like the heat of packing was Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. So I did not want to financially support this in any way, but wanted to, fuel the curiosity of like the 13 year old in me that uncritically devoured the Twilight series. Um, and so somebody had posted the audiobook online in three chunks for free. And so I consumed it illegally because I didn't want to support Stephanie Meyer. I know a lot of people were buying the book and then donating the cost of the book to the um, indigenous, like the real indigenous group that she ripped off for the werewolves. She used the name of for the werewolves in her book. And I, that doesn't sit right with me. Cause I mean, you're, you still financially supported Stephanie Meyer, even though you're donating an equal amount to an indigenous group, like she's still profiting. Anyway, not the point, Midnight Sun was exactly the hot trash I was expecting. It was Twilight from Edward's point of view, and it really doesn't make it any better. Um, in fact, I think it makes it worse that we're inside of his head hearing about how much he thinks Bella smells like a tasty snack and wants to eat her and how he justifies like hanging out in a tree to spy on her before he justifies breaking into her house and like brings WD-40 to lubricate her window so he can sneak in better. Like there's a whole crap load of like red flags that when you're in Bella's head and she doesn't have access to Edward are just confirmed. I read it. I mean, at the time I gave it three stars for like the pure nostalgic hot trash, but honestly, I think this deserves like one star or less. Um, it is like a, it's, it, it was never an original idea. It was never a good story. It was a right place, right time market anomaly that blew up, that birthed the thousand YA paranormal fantasies, paranormal romances. It was never a good book. It was never well written. It, you know, and emotionally, when I rated this, I gave it a three star. I think in reality, it's recycling the recycled hot trash, right? Like it's a thing that holds a lot of nostalgic for people. And I totally recognize that I was the right age for it. I was on board with it. I was part of that, but I can also recognize like as a critical reader now as an adult, that this is not good. <laughs> it's just not good. The next book that I read after that was Solitaire by Alice Oseman. Um, I finished this on August 24th. This was like, everything was packed. I had nothing to do. We didn't have possession of the house yet. We took possession of this house on August 27th. And I was itching because this was a vacant unit. It was a home and then it was a rental unit and then it was vacant for a year before it was on the market. And so it was empty, but like for legal reasons, like the actual process of like doing legal documents, we couldn't take it right away, even though it was empty. And so like, I was itching to get the keys. I was itching to get in here and clean and paint and do all the things because we gave ourselves such a tight window. Uh, we got possession on the 27th, spent two days fixed, oh, well, three, the 27th, the night we got it. Um, 27th, 28th, 29th, we 
repaired, cleaned, painted. And then on the 30th, we moved in. And then the night of the 30th was the first night we spent in this place. So there was a huge amount of anxiety and I just, I tried to distract myself. And so I read Solitaire by Alice Oseman. This, I believe, was her debut novel. It was all right. <laughs> um, so I have now read I Was Born for This, which I loved. I have read Radio Silence, which was solid. It was pretty good. I would reread that. But Solitaire, I mean, it was her debut novel and it was all right. Um, so my notes here say, this was an odd read. Tori was our protagonist and she has unspecified mental health issues that are never diagnosed or addressed or treated in any way. And the text leaves readers in this very uncertain place. I am so glad that I wrote about this in the reading journal because I actually have, like, I had no memory of solitaire whatsoever. So I go on to say that Tori has friends, but she hates them and she hates her life and she gives her friends nothing in return because she hates life and her friends are doing all this emotional labor and she never repays that. She's a shitty friend. She is beautiful and has two boys fawning over her and doesn't understand why people would like her. She found her younger brother Charlie the last time he attempted suicide and is deeply fucked up about that. Fair. Um, and Charlie is the Charlie from the Heartstopper graphic novels. And one of the things that I really struggled with with this book was that her debut novel takes place after the events of Heartstopper, which I read first. So I, I think in part, one of my struggles with this is that I really liked Charlie from the comics and couldn't see the like lovely Charlie of the comics uh, being as mentally unwell as he is in Solitaire, which is set in the future from the comics. It, like, it just, I, I struggled with it. And I struggle with it now, like, trying to fit those things together. And maybe it's because we read a lot of narratives about people getting well, um, especially young people struggling with an issue and then seeking treatment for that issue. We don't watch people deteriorate, but if you read Heartstopper and then you read Solitaire, obviously something has happened in there and, so, uh, and Charlie has deteriorated. And it's weird to see, I guess, a character deteriorate. Like oftentimes in adult literature, you'll see characters deteriorate, but it's just something that I wasn't expecting and jumbles my brain a little bit. Um, so for the most part, Solitaire has this larger mystery plot line. I, it almost reminds me of like A from Pretty Little Liars, like leaving cryptic notes and being like, show up and you'll see destruction and they're pranks, but they're terrible. So there was a lot of that. And apparently all the pranks were targeted towards getting uh, Tori's attention because she's just such a wonderful, lump that people want her attention. I'm still not sure what to do with this book. Reading my summary, I say I'm really not sure what to do with this book. I don't think I liked it. Tori is very interesting but also incredibly unlikable. It feels like a mess and maybe it's and maybe it is Osman's debut so maybe that's why it feels a bit messy. Maybe. Maybe it's because I didn't start here and I've read more polished things by her as she's grown as a writer and developed her craft that this just wasn't very satisfying. And so my, my basic summary from this was not a total waste of time, but not my favorite thing ever. And I gave this three stars and it was a new buy. So, ooh, I, I completed a goal. I just realized I completed a goal. Go me. Okay, so then we move into September. And thus far, I have read two things in September. Uh, they were both on my September TBR. My September TBR consisted of two books, The Gunslinger by Stephen King and No Longer Human by Junji Ito. Um, so The Gunslinger by Stephen King is for the live stream book club that I am hosting tonight. Uh, I'm filming this on the 26th of September and uh, it's a patron exclusive book club where we are rereading the Dark Tower series. Uh, this year it's going to be the first three books in the series over September for The Gunslinger, October, November, and December for the Drawing of Three and The Wastelands. 
the books get bigger as the series goes on and I know that December, November, December and retail are gonna fucking suck. Uh, so I know I won't have a lot of time, so I'm, I'm splitting that up to make it manageable. Uh, so if you're interested in reading along with us and discussing the uh, Dark Tower series by Stephen King, I will leave a link to the Patreon page below. Uh, you just have to become a patron at any tier. I have to say, this is my third time reading The Gunslinger now. So I read it when I was a kid and I didn't like it. It was when I was first getting into Stephen King and I also really liked Tamora Pierce and I was getting into fantasy and like big series and I was a series finisher. And I read The Gunslinger and I didn't get it and I hated it. Uh, in 2017, I embarked on the project the Journey to the Tower, um, the Dark Tower video series that I have on this channel and I can link above or below. I still didn't like it. I honestly wouldn't have finished it, again, as an adult, I wouldn't have finished it if it wasn't for the project that I had pitched. I finished the series now. It has a very like special place in my heart. When I finished it, I ranked the book in the series and the gunslinger remained at the bottom. Now, I'm not gonna say that The Gunslinger is like my new favorite of the whole series. I think it's a weird book, but I didn't hate it this time. And I think that's an improvement. Um, I also learned this time around, because the first time around I did like zero research. I was approaching it from a, uh, like a fantasy scholarly analysis. So pulling in other fantasy texts, other literary texts to inform my reading of the series. This time I did a little bit of research and I learned that this was originally five short stories that King then went back and sort of stitched together into one narrative. So maybe that's part of the problem is like, it's not, it was never intended to be one narrative. It was five separate things about one character that then in like post-production were edited into one thing, if that makes sense. Um, and I can definitely feel that. I don't think The Gunslinger will ever be my favorite book in the series, but I didn't hate it this time. And there are so many things in it that are very satisfying on the reread. Like there are definitely rewards like having read the series, it took me a couple of books to start making predictions that like turned out to be right based on my um, engagement with the other literary texts, right? Uh, so I made, I made some pretty big calls based on my familiarity with the um, intertextual pieces, right? But it's all right there in the beginning of the book. Like it's totally laid out for you. And at the time, I feel like when you come into it for the first time, a lot of it just reads like nonsense. It just reads like absolute bullshit, which is why I've never liked this book. I never liked the ending of this book, the conversations with the man in black. The first time reading it, like as a kid, obviously, no literary reference to pull on. And then reading it a, like the first time after many, many years having never read the series or done any of the extra reading that I did, again, it just all read like bullshit. Um, but reading it this time, I have a definite appreciation for some of the seeds that were planted in this early book. And so, surprise, I did not hate The Gunslinger. I finished that on September 15th. That was a reread and I gave it three out of five stars, which I believe is an improvement over the last time I read and rated it. And then we get to the last thing. Oh no, I've read two other books. I just haven't written about them yet. So a book that I have been maybe in the last week or so working on. I'm trying to get back in the habit of reading. Things are starting to settle down with the house. We are starting to have a little bit of a routine. I feel like it's a little bit difficult because of the shifts I work. Like I get up at 3.30, I have a little bit of time in the morning to eat, get some snacks together, and then make my commute to work. Um, and then I work. And then in the past two weeks, I've been staying late at work. I've been working beyond my shift every day, almost every day to prepare us for Christmas. I've been 5Sing the back room. The 5S's stand for something. It's like organizing. And no, organization doesn't start with an S, so I have no idea what the S's stand for. But my point being that I haven't been home a lot. So like by the time I get home, I'm done. 
I, <laughs> I have no creative energy to put into anything and that was starting to bother me. So I made an effort to carve out some time to read uh, yesterday and finished Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And this is so good. I can think of like the perfect book baby, like the perfect parents that would be this book baby. And if I were to give it to you, it might spoil the mystery and I don't wanna do that because the book itself talks about uh, how, uh, I think the blurb basically mentions that Nomi is this like rich, socialite Mexican young woman, young Mexican woman who has a cousin who got married really fast to this white stranger and he whisked her away to his manor house and uh, they haven't really heard from Catalina until one day this letter arrives and it sounds like Catalina is not doing well mentally. And so Nomi's father is like, look, I need you to go. I need you to visit your cousin and see what's going on there. Are they mistreating her? Like what, it, like, what are these white strangers doing to your cousin, right? Um, I think maybe she needs a psychiatrist and I need you to go and be my eyes. And so Nomi gets on a train and she goes to this isolated town and then she goes up this isolated mountain and sees High Place, this crumbling old English manor house built into the Mexican countryside. And it's this, this English family who has colonized the place. They have come to the silver mines. They are mining the land. They are literally sucking wealth out of the land um, and they are using indigenous labor to do it. They are using Mexican labor to do it. Um, they have imported dirt from England to plant their flowers. So they have literally replaced the dirt around the house. They've replaced the land. They've taken English land and put it in the place of Mexican soil. Like there's so much going on here with colonialism and the taking over of spaces and something weird is happening in the house and things unfold from there. And it, it was so good. Like there was a moment where I started reading it and I was like, mm, I wonder if this is a one-time read. Like, you know how some, some horror books you can read and read again because the horror remains even once you know what it is and others are just spoiled once the twist is revealed. This is one that I can see myself reading again and again, again and again because the horror is not just whatever has affected Catalina. The horror is also in the colonialism, in the treatment of uh, women's bodies, um, in the way that this family views and uses bodies for their own benefit, uh, the way that they've invaded the land and, and rooted themselves in this space. Um, it was so good. Five stars, absolutely loved this book. Um, and so I really hope that other people check it out, especially this time of year, because I think fall, October is perfect for this kind of creepy gothic book. And I will say that I was reminded a lot of Hill House with this initially, just with like um, a woman entering into this space and like having an experience with the house and the house having a presence. Um, and it's unclear real or not real. I think this book has similar vibes, um, but then there's also so much more. So definitely would recommend checking this out this time of year in this fall season. This I gave five out of five stars. I loved this. And then this morning I finished No Longer Human by Genji Ito. So this is a horror uh, manga and yeah, it's exactly like I mean I I was promised horror and it's it's pretty fucking horrific. Um 
So it's about a guy who has been, he's, he's always been very attractive. He's gorgeous and he plays the clown to make people laugh and make people like him. And women, grown ass women are attracted to him even as a child. And he is uh, sexually assaulted, he is sexually abused as a child. Um, so you have content warnings for child abuse, sexual abuse, uh, suicide, so much suicide, um, substance abuse, abortion, murder, like just, and it's so, like, because you're looking at pictures, um, it is really dark. And so I borrowed this from work back at the end of August because I was struggling to read anything like with so many words, like my mind just kept drifting away. And so I thought picking up something with pictures would be nice. And it just got so dark, like so difficult emotionally to take on that I couldn't finish it. And uh, I do have to return it to work. So I, uh, I finished it this morning and it is fucking bleak. So if you are looking for a man, a story about a man whose life is bleak for unknown reasons and who just seems to be like everything bad happens to him and you, and you want like gross body horror, check it out because it delivers. It really delivers. Um, I don't really know how to rate because like sometimes when I don't know how to rate something I rate it on like if it's out of my my depth or my expertise shall we say sometimes I will rate something based on enjoyment and I don't know that I enjoyed this I was deeply unsettled by it um I can't speak to whether or not this is particularly good or bad manga I can't because I don't have that frame of reference. Um, I can't really speak to the art. The layout, was anything creative done? I don't know. I haven't, again, read enough manga, so it's totally out of my frame of reference um, in terms of like what it's doing with the genre, which is sometimes how I rate things. I didn't enjoy it because enjoy isn't the right word. I, I, I was deeply upset and disturbed and like, moved emotionally, but like, can you five out of five star something for disturbing? I five out of five star something for being cute and happy making, and I five out of five star for something for being disturbing, and like, how does that help viewer? I don't know. I, the, my point is I don't know how to rate this. Those are the things that I read at the very end of August, and in the month of September, I honestly, with, uh, Today's the 26th with like four days left in September. I can't see myself finishing anything, hence this uh, video. Also, this is the only time I really have to film. My partner has gone out for a bike ride with his friend. So the house is empty. There are no like work Zoom calls happening. The air conditioning is off. So like, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed we can get a lot of filming done today, so you're gonna see a lot of this in the next little bit. Let me know how your reading month has gone. Have you embraced the sort of spooky, darker autumnal reads already? I hope that everyone is doing well. I know that school has started in a lot of places and that has been a fucking disaster because ha like, these are totally unprecedented times for like running schools. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you are staying safe. Before we go, we have to thank my patrons. Thank you patrons for sticking by me in this really weird time. I just, I, I am so looking forward to developing a routine, developing a schedule because I feel very discombobulated. Discombobulated? That's a great word. I feel very out of sorts having like no routine. I mean, it's not like I, I, I didn't take care of myself as an adult before. It's just there were other folks in my house who picked up the slack quite a bit more. Um, 
on like my off out. I don't I don't know. Like like I I'm still doing all of the things that I I did before. Only I guess I guess the difference now is that um when my partner finished his his work day at 5, we hang out together until I go to bed at 7.30. So like I'm cooking dinner, I start dinner at 4.30, we like eat dinner together, we do our dishes together, and then we hang out until I go to bed at 7.30. Basically I'm watching TV now. That's where a lot of my time is going. I want to find a new routine to make the content because making the content, it makes me feel good, it makes me feel happy. So I want to get back on track there. So thank you everyone for being patient while I try and just build a new routine. Thank you all so much for watching. Links to everything that you require will be in the description box down below along with some resources for you. I will see you soon with another video. Bye!